So two boats have run aground. We all knew that this channel was difficult. The prop is now slipping. He's really leaning over. Is it the biggest fish we've ever caught? So that's it, six nights in the Kinabatangan River. To be honest, we could have stayed for six weeks. There was so much to see. Every time we went out in the dinghy, we found something else. And as we anchored at the boat, the noises all around us, deafening jungle noises. No engines, no people, no drum of a city. Just glorious nature. If we ever get the chance, I have a feeling that we may well be coming back this way. But today we're off, go around the corner. We've got a couple of anchorages before we get to Lahad Datu, and then after that we start with the beaches and the islands and the coral. 35 miles to go and not a breath of wind. Hey ho! It is a glorious morning though, look at this. Well, it's business as usual. We're back out at sea after a relaxing time on the river. In fact, someone commented on one of our videos about how they love inland waterway cruising. We've obviously never done it before. That was a proper inland waterway cruise, uh, but they were also highlighting the issue or the point that in the States, you have uh, recovery vehicles that can come and assist you should you have any problems. And that's one of the big differences uh, up that river there. If anything goes wrong, you're kind of on your own, which is why it's always uh, comforting to go with other boats, shared knowledge and all that. It's a bit of a breeze coming from the southeast. Got the mizzen and the stay sail out. We're motor sailing. Uh, changed the filter on the water maker, which was absolutely filthy. Can't believe we've been drinking this water. And Liz has got the lines out. So we are now in the danger zone. I mean, it's all fairly dangerous, but uh, this is where we have started our night watches, as I've already said. Out on the horizon there is one of the police boats that we have seen hanging around. They kind of sit stationary and sit on the outside and just monitor us as we come through. No sign of the patrol boats yet. They tend to leave a little bit later and obviously they can catch up with us quite quickly as well. But uh, yeah, not much else to report really. I don't think much is going to happen today, at, fingers crossed. Um, unless the wind picks up and we might get a bit of sailing in, you never know, you never know. The engine looks like Liz has something on the end of our line. It went whizzing off. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. He went deep and I had to really struggle to get it up. At one stage, I didn't think I would, but we got it up and then Jamie lifted it out of the water. We didn't measure it. It was too big and scary. Uh, we don't like eating anything that big because it's more than likely got all kinds of parasites and whatnot in it. So it has gone back, but boy, that was exciting. <laughs> That's great, Liz. Did you manage to get a photo of it? Yeah, I filmed uh, Jamie bringing it up over the rails onto the deck and taking the hook out. It was fine. It was just hooked into its cheek, so no damage done. And then we slid it over. Oh, that's good. That's great. 
Okay. All right, he's going, Jamie, he's going back in. Is, the, is it the biggest fish we've ever caught? He's pretty fucking big. Ugh. Right. I was so excited, I didn't know what I was recording. I calmed down a bit now. That was the biggest fish I've ever caught. I don't know what it was. It was a metre and a half. There's no way we were going to measure it or even hold it up because it was so big. Jamie had to wrestle it down. So very exciting. Decided not to put the same lure out again because we really don't want fish that big. <laughs> We've got no room to put them in and we're not particularly fond of barracuda as you know anyway. So he went back. Uh, so I've taken the big lure off and I've put on a much smaller lure same size as the one I used for catching the albacore when we were down near Pulau Gaia. See how that goes. We are now approaching Tambasan, which is on that eastern side of Sabah. And it's supposed to be a little fishing village. In fact, I think it's even a fishing port. According to the pilot guide from last year, they were told not to anchor in one particular area because it's quite busy with fishing boats. Uh, the entrance, according to Navionics, according to the charts, show it's completely dry. But if you look at the satellite image, there is a channel through, so almost there. As sailing days go, it's not been too bad, including catching a bit of a monster fish. Well, if you're going to be anchored back out at sea, then this is as good a place as any. This is a little channel uh, with an island there, and that's the mainland. Lovely breeze coming through. Look at those scudding clouds. We've got blue sky. The um, mangrove is so lush green as well. Of course, the main thing that strikes you is the sun cicadas. We're surrounded by cicadas. So, uh, yeah, this looks like a nice little spot. It will do for a day and a night. Sun's going down straight in my face, but it's just so beautiful here. I just wanted to show you. It's so peaceful. There's a little bit of noise coming from a tiny, tiny village just up here. This is the island of Tambasan. We are anchored here overnight between Tambasan and the mainland of Sabah, ready for a 50 mile journey tomorrow. Getting some peace and quiet and some rest before we go. We've got to stay on watch tonight. It's not our turn. We're doing the big one tomorrow night because it is quite dangerous. We're close to the Philippines and this is the Abu Sayyaf area. So we've got to be quite uh, vigilant. We've got police boats here with us. But oh, the insects, the birds, the light, the calm, enjoying it while we can. As the sun dips over the mangroves, we end another day in another beautiful, peaceful anchorage. Those cicadas are still at it. Uh, we're in among two mangroves Basically, it's like a canal with mangroves either side. And I think I've talked about this before. The sound that mangroves make when you hit low tide, I still haven't quite got my head around it, but it, they, mangroves make this funny dropping, clicking noise, like big wells with water dropping in them. And I don't know what it is. Moisture dripping from the trees, uh, roots expanding and contracting. I don't know, but it's a fascinating sound. First heard this when we anchored outside PSS. Never heard anything like it before. And right now we can hear either side these funny little dripping, dropping noises. It's a beautiful, beautiful setting. Looking forward to a good night's sleep. Santorini, Songline 3. Songline 3, Santorini. Uh, I think the reef must be fairly close behind us because uh, we just had a local come to visit us to warn us about it. Uh, he said at 2 o'clock, he said there won't be much water over it, so when you leave, go to our starboard side. Well, it's a 6.30 start, but unfortunately it seems Santorini have twisted their chain around their anchor. I suggested perhaps they lay it down again, but it's properly wrapped around the whole thing. Let's see if we can help in some way. Looks like Jason's in the water. And they've done the right thing by the looks of it and used a halyard. Hope the crocodiles are still sleeping this morning. We've 
got a bit of a, uh, a situation here. Uh, we were crawling around the outside of the channel. Both Songlines and Chaska have run aground. And they're fairly shallow draft as well. Songlines is 1.5 metres. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, Liz is saying that the fishermen were indicating to head down the centre of the channel where we have 25 metres. I think the situation... Uh, Roy, uh, Two boats aground. It's easy to have their dinghy in the water. We've just put our dinghy in the water. Um, Songline 3 have got their dinghy in the water and are trying to pull themselves out. Chaska though on the far bank, he's really leaning over. Uh, uh, Zizi's there trying to help them and then one of the fishermen is trying to help too. The rest of us are just in the centre of the channel here waiting. We've got between, I've gone down to 11 and a half, me half metres. Uh, but that's, that's fine, so I'm just going to hang on here because uh, Jamie's going over to both boats to see if he can help out. Ooh. We all knew that this channel was difficult and we had waypoints to get out using the right hand side, starboard side as you go out, uh, but that wasn't right at all. Hmm. Shifting sands. Okay, I thought we'd uh, show you a bird's eye view of what's going on. So two boats have run aground and we've got three local fishermen with big Yamaha Enduro engines. They've been uh, pulling from one of the halyards, so Roy was tipped right over and it still wasn't moving. Uh, Lindsay and I, who were trying to free up song lines, went down and helped. We've got three boats, that's two fishermen and Zizi trying to pull Chaska, but I don't know if you can see that, every time they pull him, she's listing right over to port and doesn't appear to be moving at all. And here we've got Jamie at the front of song lines three, Lindsay at the back, yeah, she's really listing Chaska, look at that. Between five of us, including Mark, we were able to get Chaska off the mud. It was quite a sight to see her bent over. Anyway, I thought I'd grab the camera and now record what uh, we're going to do with song lines. Possibly the same thing. Let's uh, see what's happening. Uh, unfortunately, our dinghy isn't the most efficient because the prop is now slipping. Uh, the bush has gone inside, so we've only got so much power. But between the five of us, uh, let's see what we can achieve. Here we go. <laughs> Once again, the hospitality and the helpfulness of Sabayans. That's uh, three local fishermen, one with uh, his son, so it's four together in three boats. And um, yeah, between them, without uh, certainly without my assistance, <laughs> uh, with Lindsay back on board, it was literally just those three and Mark giving them an extra push, and they were off quite quickly. I was very impressed with the locals as well. There was one came up first and asked if he could help, and then he shot up and got his mate, he realised he wasn't going to be big enough, Mark arrived, and then between everybody, I mean, it just worked great, so, yeah, I threw them a 25 ringgit each to, to the three boats, so I'm sure they'll be quite happy with that. I'd better go back to Liz, who's stuck on Esper, and if she's not careful, she's going to run up over the sandbar that's up there, so uh, that's enough adventure for one morning, let's get going. Mark just confirming that uh, the depth which we're in now, which is uh, 20 metres, does drop back down to about 6 metres. Uh, he's leading the pack and he's back up to deeper waters. This was actually our main concern, apart from the reef on the north side of the bay, uh, of the channel, um, this was the other 
uh, problem we were going to have was getting out of here so we are on a falling tide fortunately it's only neeps it's not too much but a falling tide is a falling tide that doesn't help anyone when you've run aground This is the most dangerous part of the journey. It's also the longest leg at 50 miles. And with the one hour delay from the boats running aground, uh, of course we're a bit behind schedule. I've just asked that we try and keep a comfortable 6.2 knots, which is what Esper seems to be sitting on at the moment. When we were going up the river, we were getting left behind. And this is mainly because I tend to motor at between 15 and 1600 RPM, which gives us a comfortable five knot speed. Uh, but Liz has been looking into the efficiency of the Beta engine, the Beta 60, and it does say that it will comfortably motor at up to 1800 RPM without too much change in fuel consumption. So we filled the tanks yesterday, uh, we've got plenty of fuel, and so we're now on 1800, and she's motoring along comfortably. We're now rounding the easternmost tip of Saba. Behind me, it looks gorgeous over there. There's loads of sandy beaches, nobody around. And behind you, over there, that's the Jolo Islands, which are pretty much the most dangerous uh, bits of sea in this area for piracy. So we, we're, we're, we're in close formation as we go through here, but what a shame, because can you imagine, this could be a fantastic little cruising area. We didn't have this bloody problem with pirates. 